Last time on starting our own vacation rental. So last time we talked about what an STR is, where to find one, how to find one, and we revealed that we finally secured one for ourselves. So after a year of looking and trying and missed opportunities, we accidentally won a place. But oh my gosh, what do we do now? Okay, now it's time to start planning this all out. We don't have just one unit, we have two units. That's right, we bought a duplex. That means we're gonna need twice the amount of stuff. We're gonna need double the beds, double the couches, double the everything. It's like a lot, oh my gosh, actually. Just thinking about it actually gives me cold sweats again because it's a lot. <laughs> this is gonna get expensive. So we're pretty sure this is gonna be a great rental. Unless the universe conspires against us, what is our backup plans? I mean, the first hurdle is getting the STR permit. What if we don't get the STR permit? Well, we can rent it 30 days furnished. Executive suites, also what they're known as, are really popular here in Bend as well right now. But what if that doesn't work? Well, worst case scenario is we can always long-term rent it and just sell all of the furniture that we had just bought to furnish it. Even if we rent out long-term, it should produce enough income to cover all of its expenses. But if we get the STR thing, it should really produce a lot of income. So what's next? Well, what we did kind of dragged our feet for a while because we got kind of busy with selling real estate, and we kind of underestimated how long the STR permit was gonna take. So in between busting our tail in real estate, dealing with hundreds of buyers and sellers, at least that's what it felt like, we had to put together and initiate the plan for what we were gonna do with this property. So while we are holding our breath, hoping that it closes, it's time to start planning. All right, so I'm the planner, and John, not so much the planner. Well, I'm the, I'm the big picture kind of guy. Okay. Well, we're going to create a big picture here. So I created a spreadsheet on items that we would need for a short-term rental. And on the spreadsheet, it breaks it down per room. So like in bedroom number one, you need a king frame, king mattress, king sheets, king pillows. You also need pillowcases and covers and all those little items that you forget as you're frantically buying and trying to get all these items and then you also forget how much you paid for it. So I created a spreadsheet to itemize all of these items. So also if we choose to do this again, which we will for the other side, I know exactly what we'll need and kind of how much it's going to cost us. Yay! We, we closed. closed! Oh my gosh, that's so scary. So we have a decision to make. Do we spend the money now to paint the place? It's not in bad shape, but we do want to upgrade the color. Yeah, it's kind of yellow. Yellowish. And with all the beige and the countertops, it's just yellow. And we want to have more of an updated feel with, you know, the whites and the grays that are a little more modern. But the big problem is, is we don't really have to paint. We just really, really want to update the color. Where do you draw that line? We don't need to spend the money. But it could help the overall feel of the finished unit. Which could. Relate to more bookings. And a higher price point. And a higher price point. So we did opt to have the place painted and we decided just to go for it. And with the hopes that the place is going to be so booked in the future that there will be no time to paint it later. And so that it will be looked as as a smart move. So now that it's closed and we have the contractor in there, it's time to start working on these permits. Okay, so this is so frustrating. I submitted everything they need and I did it more than we've ever done before. Like I. I had a buddy of mine actually draw up, you know, the architectural plans of the unit so that it was in the past, I've done this on the back of a napkin and it worked. So it's kind of frustrating. They just got back to us here and um, there's required action 
uh, basically they didn't approve us on our first time through. Drawn to standard, drawn to a standard industry scale with North Arrow. Okay, I can put an arrow on it, fine. Uh, show all property lines, access points and existing and proposed structures, parking and other site improvements with dimensions and setbacks to property lines, show all easements and street frontage improvements, provide topographical contour lines, one foot intervals if slope is less than 10% or two foot if it's greater than 10%. Provide building coverage calculations, lot coverage, floor area ratio, require all uh, require clear vision areas. Please include the dimensions of the parking spaces and show which parking spaces are for each unit. That seems a little bit like overkill, right? I don't even think they ask for all this stuff when the actual plan when they're building the building. One foot intervals. Anyway, we got to figure this out. The permitting process is such a pain. Next, it is time to outfit the place, AKA shopping. There's literally two ways to do this, DIY or hire an interior designer to do it for you. Guess which one we did. Again, you never know where you're gonna find deals or find certain things that actually fit your design. So we literally find ourselves checking out furniture stores, thrift stores, going online at Amazon. Amazon's a great place to go and get a lot of the small items like silverware, even dishes, cups, um, soap dispensers, those type of things. And also, since we have two units, I put it all into a wish list. So when we go back to do the other unit, it's all right there. And I know exactly how much it costs. And it's here in two days. Can't go wrong with that. Wayfair was a super budget-friendly furniture site to go to. Um, it also shipped really fast, and we got like bed frames there and nightstands. Oh, 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 well, well, well we also took a three-hour drive to Portland and went to Ikea, and need I say more? It's Ikea. I will say though, of all the things to go cheap on, do not go cheap on mattresses and couches. Don't do it. Especially because our couches and our units are high to beds. Yeah, those are spinning no matter where you go. TJ Maxx has great little trinkets for staging. They've got great wall art, succulents. Well, fake succulents anyway. And of course, we had to go visit our favorite mattress lady here in town and spend some time testing a few out. That sounds weird. Okay, so the place is painted, initial permitting process is complete, and it's moving day. Or should we say unboxing day and putting together furniture day and situating where it goes day. Hanging pictures on the wall day. Mounting TV bracket day. Doing all the initial laundry day. Kids stop making so much noise day. Yeah, it took longer than a day.
Wow. So this is just a fair warning. Keep in mind, we're not interior designers here. There's a lot of fine tuning that happens. Heck, your staging, it needs to look as nice as possible. Functionality is only one part of it. It's not like you need every kitchen gadget known to man, but you definitely want to have a good list of the basics. Most people will initially only think about the furniture and think, oh, that's going to be so much fun. Um, but really, you have to decorate the walls and think about where things should go. Yeah, depending on your budget, you could go who cares thrift store style, or you could go super high end modern and drop a fortune. What we did was a blend of everything. We want it to be nice and modern, but not too crazy expensive. Okay, it's ready. Now, how, how do we, we get, get it booked? booked? And spend some time testing some mattress out. Testing that, a few out. That just sounds weird. What did we, how did we test a few mattresses out?